fail, we're here for pick a manier. So, it's been a very <laughs> emotionally exhausting week for me. <laughs> so, um, if you've not been here before, you click on the box below and it will open. There's a link to my website that will show you the four manier. But very kindly, I'm going to show you them here. So, here are the manier. So the reason I put them on my website is to get you to read the story behind what you're picking. And this week, it's the very strong energy of Cosmic Karnak. So I've been trying to do this reading all day. I sat up outside in the courtyard, the sun came out, and just as I went to press record, it started to rain. So I came back in and then the sun came out again. I went back out there and it started to rain. So then I came in here and it couldn't seem to light anything up enough. And I've just decided in the end that this is about the darker side of things. So if you don't want to pick a mania, that's fine. Um, you can just listen <laughs> to them and be glad you didn't pick them. I get the feeling that they're going to be quite heavy energies. Look, the Keeper of Karnak gave me half a nice day and then he turned on me in a form of initiation ceremony and I uh, I passed my test because it brought up a lot of very old frequencies from my birthday but you'll find all about that when you read the article we're going to press on it's Pluto going direct right now it's just beginning and that brings forwards very heavy transformative energy and Pluto is a real bugger you know, it's going to be tricky energies. So I completely understand if you want to just switch off now because it, I just there's something that says this could be quite difficult. We're going to ask before we do the actual four categories and I've got eight cart decks, two for each, which they made me pick with the dowsers. We're just going to ask a little bit about Pluto using the lovely Afro-Brazilian deck because they've become very chatty of late. So, can you please give us a general feel, Pluto, of what's going down? What's going down, Pluto? What's going down? There's a card going down on the floor. Okay, let's see what we've got so far. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bit of a battle and a fight going on. And look, I understand it. I've I've uh, <laughs> I've had that battle and this fight this week. I'm still healing from it. And look, I just want to say, Pluto brings up shadow work, and shadow work's really, really important. We've now found out how to anchor our luminous warrior inside us, and that's what we need to face this journey forward. So, I'm feeling a lot better for it, but going through it was emotional with some tears so here we go we've got six little cards that have landed on the microphone okay, <laughs> okay so switch off the video now because it's gonna get dark so the first two cards <laughs> I'm laughing because I've done it <laughs> So the first two cards are the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. And look, it's a battle. It's a battle between new ideas and old ideas. This is what Pluto is about. It doesn't do things lightly. It storms in and look, you have to face it. You, there's, Pluto doesn't allow you to turn your back on things. It brings up things for your own good, but you have to face them. You have to deal with them fully and you have to be grateful for a way of seeing how these old bad thoughts that roam around in your head can be turned to new thoughts that are positive. There's no sense of regrets. Part of my journey was a trauma from 30 years ago that affected my life for all of my life. Um, it robbed me of many dreams and wishes and desires and possible, you know, uses of a talent that was within me. And, uh, and that hurt. And it stayed hurting for like 30 years. 
But yesterday and the day before and the day before that, as it all arose again, I didn't feel the stress about it because I understand that everything happens for a reason. I'm comfortable with my self-love right now. I've never been at any point in my life, but I am right now. And so the wounds and the past, I'm able to look at and just think, without you, without that pathway, without that lifetime's divine detour, I wouldn't be here right now where I am. And so I'm grateful for all of the wounds because they help me to move forward into what new frequencies are so coming in now. So then we have the Five of Cups. And this is, this is like some part of your life. It's like a little porcelain tower moment. A little cat wanders in and just knocks over your best piece of spode and the contents spill out all over your clean tablecloth and they make a mess and you just look at the mess and you just think well i could put it in the washing or i could just throw it away or you know there's so many possibilities but it's not the responsibility of the cat the cat was doing its own journey what it naturally does and that's what i mean about the wounds the wounds were the natural part of the journey. So allow the emotions to spill out now because, <laughs> because there's a massive great big tower moment <laughs> coming in with it. So you really kind of got very little choice about this. You've got to face this at some point. Look, you can avoid it. You don't have to pick a manier now, but at some point, this will happen again because Pluto will go retrograde again and then it will turn direct again and you'll be given another chance to do this thing again. So it's just about when you feel ready for it to be your moment and it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be now. So the interesting thing about this is that, is that to help you through your tower moment, do you see how the tree has been decorated? This is talking about tying yourself in with the natural world the natural world is here to help us now when i went to karnak you know i have a great affinity with the natural world i'm obsessed with the natural world i love to look at all aspects of it but while i was in karnak the natural world allowed me to take with me the mother of many spirit and she kept me safe from the darkness in a way she didn't protect me so that i didn't see it she just stood with me so that i could see it and feel comfortable seeing it so i've said it before in the readings light a candle call her in and just face your demon <laughs> or plural demons i don't know but do it with a sense of connecting with the natural world because spirits are connected to the natural world they're part of the world around us. They're part of nature. Um, and there is, it's very beautiful down here. The character is leading the goat, Capricorn. Now, Pluto is in Capricorn at the moment. And so Capricorn also, the goat represents devil, vortex energy. And that's exactly what's rising up with Pluto. But Pluto is heading within the next year and three months or more. No, it's a bit longer, but within the next two years, it's heading into, by 2023, it heads into Aquarius. And so at the moment, you need to get a grip and put it on a leash. The, the February thing I was thinking about is when Pluto returns to the same place it was in at the point when they signed the American uh, Declaration of Independence. And so there's some quite big energies coming up for America in February, 2022. But then we have the Seven of Wands. <clears throat> and the Seven of Wands in this card is facing yourself 
facing your shadows but what you notice about it is it's not like seeing some figure like this your shadows are like are your light they're you but that you haven't integrated enough yet to understand them so you're facing yourself and your thought traumas the battle is within you and it could feel like anything from a small piece of spode to some massive great tower moment but it's yours to deal with and then you have the hanged man and this card is really talking about how you have to choose as I just said when is your moment to do this work when are you ready to do it because if you don't do it you just stay hanging around if not dance yourself into the arena and face your fears okay so that's just a quick little uh, beginner so now we're going to or opener on Pluto and what's going on so now we're going to do pick a mania so did you pick mania number one okay so if you did pick mania number one we are working with Le Chemin de Leval, the Awakening Pathways Oracle, and the Alistair Crowley deck. So, Hannah Spanner is your deck of cards. I hope you picked it, Hannah, because it will surprise you. Anyway, Chemin de Leval, Keeper of Karnak. What would you like to tell the people who have picked Manier number one? What would you like to tell them that picked Manier number one? What message would you like to bring out for those that picked Manier number one, please? Nothing. You've got nothing to do. <laughs> Come on, please. Oh, they're really tight-lipped. They're absolutely, every single time, can feel the energy of them being sucked hard together. Like, getting to the root of this issue is something that you really don't want to look at. It's very strange. It's really, um, it's really very ordered. Um, it's like you've, you've, buried this issue so far so deep that you're not going to look at it we've got one but I would like a second and then we'll look at the tarot can we please have a second oracle card can we please have a second oracle card there we go. They've landed facing each other and on top of each other. So we have 213, we have 2 and 13. It's interesting, 13 is a very powerful frequency at the moment. We're in a 13 moon, uh, full moon year, 2020. 13 is a divine feminine birthing number so there's something you need to birth so we have liqueur the heart of the matter the heart of the matter that you've hidden inside yourself and the fact that it's a choice that awaits you so we're going to take the Alice Crowley and bring cards from each of them and see what we have So, can we please have some messages for Lecour, number two, the heart of the matter, the heart of the matter please. Okay. So, we have oppression. Change and Queen of Wands. 
So it begins with the Ten of Rods, Ten of Wands. And here we have Uh, the energy that I'm getting from this is uh, do not enter do not enter this space it's like these burdens that you have this this secret this hidden thing this wound whatever it is that you have you have so effectively barred anyone from seeing it that it's almost like you you can't see it yourself. It's like, ah, oh, it's like a frequency that you think you've dealt with. And actually what you've done is, is you've just built a, a very strong no entry barrier, almost bound it in your own internal magic to stop any further inspection of that frequency. And then you have the two of discs or pentacles. Now, this is an Ouroboros snake and it's forming an infinity symbol. And there are two yin and yang discs either side. And it's telling me that this the heart of your issue is currently almost dividing you into two distinct people. So I'm getting a strong sense of uh, bi uh, bipolarism almost, uh, or depression, or mood swings, um, because this issue is such a raw nerve for you that even now you're thinking oh, no I didn't pick number one I picked number three and you're you're that sore about this notion that you're going you're willing to push forwards right now because you don't want to have this brought together and the whole point is is that the snake is biting its own tail it's time to end the cycle and unite the two parts of you as one and then you have the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands, I often call the Mistress of Manifestation. Uh, she's such powerful fire energy. And you, you're, you're, you're using fire to hide this frequency. You're holding that energy back with such a force of flame that this card's kind of echoing that she's got her hand on the leopard um, or the cheetah and the cheetah in this deck for me represents creative manifestation so this inability to face this shadow within yourself is restricting your passion and creativity it's causing a really strong distortion to your frequency. And then you have the Seven of Cups, which comes with the word debauch, but that is again, you have to be very careful with the Alistair Crowley deck that the, the words he uses are, they drive too much importance and they're not the important part. The important part is the frequency. And this is a frequency of healing, of melting, but of removing toxicity. And we have in this card, we've got the sense of Venus coming in to melt this down. Right, I'm also getting this sense of a kind of, at the bottom, at the bottom, just down here, I've never seen it like this before. It's like one of those, little dolls that I don't know why people have that are like a crochet, have a crochet dress and they sit them over a toilet roll on the back of a lavatory. I think they're absolutely gross. But there's this one's coming over in that way as some kind of, it's, it's, 
it's about toxic melting it's about the need this this hidden thing is keeping you and i hate myself for saying this in the gutter but not looking at the stars which is that oscar wilde fair, phrase that you may be in the gutter but he's at least looking up at the stars you're not looking up at the stars you're just kind of wall wallowing around in this bilge because you can't face this deep shadow okay and then you have the devil energy which is capricorn and this is exactly where pluto is this is heavy it's something raw male frequency that has happened to you look most things are raw male frequency because the age of pisces was raw male frequency and it's very dense heavy energy but we're no longer in that dense heavy energy that energy is transforming and it's lightening and now is the time that you can do this and face this plutonian trauma that's rising up um sorry you need to see the card it's a goat standing on a penis with people in its testicles so what i'm getting from this is is rebuilding it's like I'm getting a sense of geometric cobwebs and they're interesting in themselves um, cobwebs sense uh, there's always a sense of a cobweb being a trap of being something that happens in old dusty places but also we forget to look at the fact that cobwebs are actually a home for spiders spiders are interdimensional magical creatures with eight legs they've got the key to things when you walk into uh, the thread, the gossamer wisp of a single spider's web and it kind of sticks to you and you can't get it off and you're doing that whole kind of thing. It's when spirit is trying to give you the merest thread of a new inspiration to help you out of a problem. The geometric nature of these cobwebs at the back is talking about new design. You can change this frequency within you. You can face the shadow and integrate the shadow but you have to be willing to look at it and then it's talking about how it brings to you four of cups moment it's refilling your cups it's making you feel at home in your sacral it has cancer which is to do with the home at the bottom um, but it's refilling you it's actually allowing the waters the emotions to put out the fire so that's the core, la coeur, le coeur, the heart. Interesting just that it's le coeur, masculine heart. Yeah, women are associated with emotions. Not judging, just saying. I'm finding, it's also le choix, the choice. It's a masculine choice of the heart. It's got nothing to do with feminine. <laughs> Anyway, so le choix. What do we have for le choix? Can you please clarify for us le choix? Ooh, that had a little bit of a boom boom at the end. So what is the choice? Look, this is about new beginnings. Oh my God, it's so about new beginnings. So, it's basically saying you have le coeur. We've just talked about what that is. It's a dark emotional trauma that, um, that unsettles you so badly you keep trying to forget it. Look, read my blog. I did exactly that. The biggest trauma in my life, I forgot. I, it would come back occasionally, but I thought it was gone to bed until it came up again and then I looked at it from a new perspective and I managed to put it to bed properly so this heart needs to be brought back and cleaned off and brightened it needs to be reborn now the choice is between that old heart that's not functioning properly and a new embryo in a womb 
and then what do you have as the frequency moving forward from this you have a brand new beginning in the real world you have the ace of pentacles this is the real world your whole self coming into the real world and it has um it has a series of wonderful peacock wings in green it's about birthing in the new world there's a sense of acorns growing into something great there's layered beautiful application of uh pentagrams um and then just one sec one two three four five six seven and a, a, a seven-sided star in the center it's also got uh tumela ophium but it's to meta ophium you need to look that up i did it a long time ago and it's a very confusing phrase but it's to do with from the serpent ophicus a new life is born which is in this embryo here um and it's about balance. It's about everything being in a natural balance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the seven sided star sits within a pentagram and a ten sided kind of petal opening a completion and a new beginning. A completion, ten, and a new beginning. And where does that bring you? Absolutely gorgeous. Look, we talked earlier about the the goat not the testicles but they're in there and the the way in which you're holding still but it's burning up inside you trying to hold this energy down and hidden away in the next card when you birth yourself anew suddenly you're in a brand new frequency and look our queen of pentacles the whole world behind her that past that trauma is now just a black and white two-dimensional pointless memory and she's now she's got the devil under control the vortex is shut now she's moving forward he's got the biggest horns hair or the devil he may have had the biggest horn then but not once you integrate that energy that trauma and this is a completion this is the most wonderful card it says completion it has four it's the four of wands and this is about a happy home again we have the devil and the and spirit as a as a kind of uh, swallow spirit swallowing the devil on every on each of the wands all the way around bringing a completion bringing a balance bringing everything bringing these two circles all together bringing them together and it happens bam when you decide to do this when you decide to face this it will happen bam because it's followed by another ace the ace of wands a brand new first card this is like the zero point on anything this is where we move forward with brand new inspiration not this 10 this one but it is interesting that your reading begins and ends with all the cards spread out between a 110 that's a manifesting power number 1st of October remember magician wheel of fortune but yours deals with passions and ideas your passions are so blocked and by the end BAM they're flowing so that's your little shadow that you're facing some issue that's not clear but it's the heart of the matter and it is to do with your heart your heart is not able to mend properly as a consequence of it because remember you've got to bring your two heart chakras back together that's what we're doing that's what i've done i've done that by by connecting myself love i've been able to pull these two energies together and it's really it's quite lovely still need to energize back up but we're getting there now did you pick number two manier number two this is the one that's got a very small base and a much larger it looks like a kind of an axe head now for your reading we have the moonology cards 
and we have the Rev de Gaia. And as I say, I've no idea what messages we're getting. So, can we please have a message for all the people that picked Mania number two, but hadn't switched off after seeing Mania number one? <laughs> so, can we please have two cards if possible? But I'm not going to force that. If you want to send extra, you're welcome to. So, it's time to release negativity and step out of your comfort zone are the two cards. It's a full moon in Scorpio and a north node. Now, again, I'm going to say it's not a full moon in Scorpio, but it is the full moon on the 31st of October which is a full moon in Taurus, but it's in the star sign, the sun sign of Scorpio. I'm really getting a sense of the feeling that these things we're working on now are fast. We've got to do them now. You can do them in two years, 10 years, if you don't want to do them now. But if you, if you want to face these things, it's going to be happening fast. And step out of your comfort zone, North Node. North Node's in Aries. And we're currently in Libra, which is the opposite. So, you need to get, look, Aries is always about taking action. So, let's see what cards go with these. It's interesting that they're both deep purple, that real sense of intuition, third eye. Maybe your issue is to do with the third eye. It's time to release negativity. What is this about, please? Can we please have cards for it's time to release negativity? It's time to release negativity. It's time to release negativity. It's time to release negativity. Time to release negativity. Oh, that was a big bunch. Quite like in making this a long one, six cards. So, it opens with the seven of water. And this is to do with dreams. It's the Reg the Gaia cards, the, the dreams of Gaia. But this is almost, there's a serenity to this card, but there's also a sense of. Oh, I'm going to come, I'm going to say it in a minute. I'm just going to lay out the other cards and check before I say it. Have a little look at that card. So time to release negativity. So it seems to be talking about something I've also just experienced, which is your desire, as was mine, I'll be honest, um, is to release the negativity by asking spirit team to identify in dreams. I always tell people to do that because it's the best way to start shadow work is to ask your spirit team, give me a dream so that I can understand what it is you want me to do. Now, the seven of water in this card is talking about how in your dreams, you're not able to witness fully the purpose. You're confusing the issue Maybe you're not remembering the dreams. Maybe they're too emotional for you and you're not picking up the key point. Um, so at the moment, it's not about the need to do this negativity releasing in dreams. You need to do it awake. You need to journal any dreams you have or you need to journal your life and try and explain it to another you don't have to publish it you don't have to tell another but what i want you to do is to try and write out what it is that's haunting you okay because you've got to bring it into balance and that's what the next card's about it's about working to find your darkness and your light and holding them both as something that is representative entirely of you. And this is the six of air. 
she's receiving a cosmic download that's the dream that's the energy but you need to do it while awake because you need to look deep at this plutonian dark side and you need to bring that into being in the real world and she's got this instrument in her hand with two wings and the, I have this sense of her writing from her heart with the message and it's interesting that from the way I look at a card and a person the left is the past and the right is the future so what you're trying to do is you're trying to draw in from your past the beautiful best sides of things that you've experienced in this life in other lives in dna recall of ancestors that you're not at the moment integrating into your future but you need to integrate it into walking i know this sounds weird but with your dark side always aware always alive always ready to explain things because the dark's not something we're meant to fear the dark is merely to help us see from a to b otherwise you're just you go nowhere you're just in the middle so it's just a very interesting thing it's saying bring your darkness into the present because you've got to live with it that's how you move on release the fear by bringing it forwards and owning it now you then have the three of earth and this is this card always talks to me about acorns planted <coughs> so long ago so so long ago that nobody remembers planting them almost squirrel does spirit squirrel there but um it was something that was planted with um, ancestral lines. This really is about uh, this negativity that you feel is something that's very far down the rows of the manure, right back to the beginning of time, because it's something that's been forgotten and it's being fed. When it was planted, it's being fed with blood, which when I read these cards, um, the cards that contain blood are to do with cosmic contracts. It's not a contract that you bled for. It's a contract that someone in your DNA, an ancestor, bled for. And it was left unfinished, but not even started. That's the point of it. It's like a gift that was intended for an ancestor that they never even found a chance to water and start to grow and nurture and it's waiting for you to move towards it i don't know what that gift is we might get a hint but it's something that you need to discover but you need to discover it in a waking time because otherwise it's another of the energies that you think you've dealt with but you haven't dealt with it properly so you're trying to pull up i and i <coughs> i guess it is a an energy <coughs> i want to cough really badly there's a a really dusty old frequency here it's so what i'm getting is the sense that it's like a desire you have that you are too scared to even voice and that's why it always remains hidden um i'm just trying to tune into the energy i'm going to carry on and hope that it comes through because you've got three three it's like three three is the master number of the 3d world the world we live in um and this is about journeying forwards with a new passion but you've got to voice that passion you've got to find 
that secret desire I, i'm being told you know what it is i'm being told within you there's something you've always wanted to do but you're almost too frightened to say it out loud for fear and that's why it never gets watered it never gets brought up and this there's something about this card it's the three of wands which is ordinarily a card of knowing that your boats are coming your ships are coming in and and holding on to a vision and allowing it to come towards you but this is about engaging in the process of walking towards the ships so the seeds are planted and that's already there in the earth frequencies now is the time to go and walk towards this deep secret this tree that you need to grow that's your truth your idrasil magic you need to engage with seeking it and it's a balancing of energies it's almost like even when you admit this to to it's coming again i can feel as i go to talk this it's like i'm fearful to speak it <coughs> i want to keep it so it's a really sharp dusty cough this is card 19 in the major arcana in that deck but it has extra cards this is emotions this is usually the card of the sun and there is elements of the sun in this card but there's also elements of despair and there's also elements of having the old frequencies of pisces biting down on your leg down here and the new energy of the age of pisces at the top and the cards are really saying to you that let that release the fears that ask for your dream walk towards your dream demand that you have your dream because we're in a different frequency the acorns that were planted that are part of your dna so my feeling is it's not just a thought process so it's not like just saying oh i've always wanted to be i don't know a healer or something because what you can want to be a healer and you can learn all the esoteric information but without the memories of certain performance frequencies being in your dna it won't be as good for you as it might be for another we've all got different frequencies and purposes attached within our dna that affect the distortions that our molecule that our consciousness has when it wraps around the molecules so uh, whatever it is that you dream secretly to do it's within your dna to do it you know it could be oh i've always wanted to play the piano and be really fantastic at the piano and you've never done anything musical but the point is within your dna is the right frequency to be good you see i'm not good at the piano because i've got enormous hands and sometimes when i'm playing my fingers get stuck between the black keys and there's something about the way in which the brain needs to divide that my dna doesn't like to do comfortably my dna like dna likes to take in lots of things and drive down a focus so we all have different gifts within our dna <coughs> again that is in there and then you have card 14 which is the king of earth this is life force this is this when you embrace it fully grown i want to say that you've got some kind of gift with magic because this represents for me the green man um, and this is an energy that works with the natural world that works with the elementals in the natural world with sprites all of those kind of frequencies and maybe that's why it's <clears throat> doing that in my throat because you would have to step out of your comfort zone because you fear being called a lunatic or crazy for the, the gifts that are within you i suspect you already know what's out there and you would like to work with them but also because of the way in which 
uh, nature elemental sprites and pixies and goblins and all those kinds of things have been portrayed during the age of Pisces you fear them as well they're not to be feared if, you, if it's in your frequency if it's in your DNA to work with these beings then that's a beautiful gift because it's not in everybody's we've all got different soul purposes that we can do within the molecules that we have our molecules are being upgraded I understand that so some of your gifts may not have been possible until now there's a lot of that changing so step out of your comfort zone so if you embrace this desire what do we get if you step out of your comfort zone and don't have that <coughs> coffee it's a very sharp cough it's a very uncomfortable frequency so can we please have some cards to talk about where this is going where is this going can we please see where this is going can we please see where this is going step out of your comfort zone where does it get you step out of your comfort zone and where does it get you step out of your comfort zone and where does it get you come on step out of your comfort zone and where does it get you one more go for another card Mm, step out of your comfort zone and where does it get you one more one more one more I just feel like I want another card step out of your comfort zone and where does it get you it gets you that extra card and that one's the only one facing down so I'm not going to read that till the end your first card out is the ace of water look this is powerful emotional water dragon energy really emotional stuff so uh, I'm getting undines as a as a being spoken to me water sprites oh grow up that's what it is <coughs> I've said it it's out so it's um, it's working with the energy of water but from an elemental aspect as a healing aspect as and I've said it before as, as a kind of uh, a library of souls energy the water contains memories so there's some part of it um, it's very very warm and loving beautiful energy that's coming from this dragon And then you have the three of air and the water oh that's so sweet the dragons at the back working with you giving you all this esoteric knowledge from the books of well mm, I kind of want to say that it's it's bigger than just earth Akashic it's because you've got the light language of the cosmos around it your 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 desire it's kind of very much starseed territory in that you want to understand the wisdom of the entire cosmos not sure that that's quite doable yet but that's a desire and that's important because it keeps you learning this is definitely a feeling that you've got to step forward and integrate new knowledge you've got to start allowing new information into you okay and uh, it, there's a sense of the alchemist you have a key around your neck spirit is sitting with you but I just I love the water dragon over the back just reading with you studying with you helping you it's like when you accept this old mission because this feels pagan pre-pagan this is almost neolithic when this was planted but the person never got round to it which is a surprise because the the dragon energy lines are definitely there in, in Karnak um, this is about working with the I want to say Yogman Gandhi the energy of the water serpent snake 
Loki's giant sun that wraps itself around the world. It's grid work, but it's kind of like uh, it's got an Akashic connection to place, people, their DNA, understanding what people's frequency connection is to the place in which they are, but also the connection of other planets and energies to areas on the earth. You see, when I do sound healing, I know the relationships between parts of the body and the planets. This is about understanding the relationship between places around the earth and the planets and knowing what is the best kind of frequency and activity to take place as we move forward in those regions. It's like being a cartographer of the new frequencies that are coming down to the world. And then you have the sage. This is what you become, card seven. And this is, look, it's, you know, there's you as you learn it. And it's a long process. And there's where you get to, shaman type figure. This incredibly powerful being that's connected to so much. You've got your little owl on your hand still. But you've also picked up wolf spirit, you know, a leadership role. Um, and you've got the most wonderful Celtic swirling going on behind you. Still got your key around your neck, but it's hidden. That's your interdimensional doorways business. At first, you're really proud of it. You can't stop telling everybody. <laughs> it's there on your neck. And now you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I use that all the time, but you don't need to know about it. So what's the hidden card? Okay, 12, Le Consoleur. This is water counselling. This is, this is the, I want to say this is your higher self. This is your connection to your higher self. That's what you're looking for within this energy frequency. That's really interesting because I'm really getting that sense from the Mania um, with its thinner point of a whale diving back into the earth. Um, and here, Yogmangandir is a water serpent. And this is really about being connected to the emotions of all things and being able to regenerate frequencies. Absolutely beautiful. So, that's your thing. But you've got to let go of the fears. Time to release the negativity. Ah that little cough, step out of your comfort zone, embrace the crazy world that awaits you. So did you pick Mania number three? Did you pick Mania number three? And if you did, we have Odin and the Nine Realms. This is the one that's very pointed. This has got a finger up to the cosmos. So, and you've also got the Lightseer's deck. So, can we please have a couple of cards to talk about Picamania? Picamania. Oh, you've got three. So, I have to look at Odin cards in a row first before I put them down by the side because they. Right, this is about. This this f pointed finger up. There's a, uh, uh, there's a sense of huge spiritual power being lessened and lessened. That's just a general energy, but that's not the frequency of the cards. The earth energy around you stays stable until the end. There's and and Loki is about transformation, but you begin with tear. And Tyr is always about being a spiritual warrior prepared to make sacrifices. Skadi is about not slipping, but she's also to do with partnerships. And Loki is a shapeshifter. So I'm taking the Lightseer's deck. That card's already fallen out and I didn't write for them, but I'm still going to keep it. We need to understand here can you please explain tear to us 
Can you please explain tear to us? Can you please explain tear to us? Beginning to get a new energy frequency from this that's to do with a new heart. Can you please explain tear to us, causing a transformation? Can you please explain tear to us? Can you please explain tear? Can you please explain tear? Can you please explain tear? Oh, that's so many cards. One, two, three, four, five, six on just the first deck. Right, I'm getting a sense of a huge completion from the first two cards. It's the High Priestess and the World. So it's two, two, one. But there's something about those two cards that says one, zero. Completion, new beginning, sacrifice, let go of something, change. High Priestess is trying to open your eyes to something. She's very much talking and she does open her eyes sometimes if you look at her really carefully. This is a download. That's this pointing up. You're receiving some kind of transmission from the cosmos because it's still here again. It's passing you through a karmic portal. And I do get the sense of the mother of many being part of this. But you're, you're tiptoeing around. It's almost like prevar 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 prevaricating. There's a sense of you not engaging properly. This is to do with love, this reading. Um, but it's like... <clears throat> look it's like you understand things about yourself you understand all kinds of things that are happening to you and yet you're still walking like your feet are about to be cut to shreds like you're not allowed to have things like you have some kind of pre-programmed notion that you're not allowed something good you are and uh and instead of tiptoeing around things you need to get it's almost this is almost like burying yourself in anything but facing the truth of what's going on around you that you're a lovable person that deserves love that you have a frequency out there in somebody else that matches you and is perfect for you and you need to settle into your own frequency you're seated like the queen of swords in a sense of isolation your heart is locked away down here <clears throat> oh this is a little bit like the energy of the rabbit reading from a while back that was about Jane Austen because I just said Jane Austen in my head again it's like you are there's an air of arrogance to your notion of the perfect partner you're wanting the person to be more perfect than you they're not meant to be they're meant to be the same as you and that's what she's doing here she's got her heart locked away because she knows nobody can come and claim it uh oh king of wands turns up so well, what can we say about the King of Wands? <laughs> so many things we can say about the King of Wands. Hello, gorgeous man. He's the handsomest tarot card I think I've ever seen in my life. If he is real, where is he? I say that every time, but where are you? This isn't my reading, it's yours. So but it's what he represents. He represents, <laughs> he represents the perfection that you don't believe exists. You, you can't have someone more perfect than you because you are perfect. So he has to be the same as you. He has to be the same as you. And yet what you're doing is, is you're seeing 
you're trapping yourself in your own mirrored soul desire almost you're the you're binding anyone up who might come close because there's some part of you that wants to deny it so we're moving on to scardi because it's interesting scardi has a very long backstory she her father was killed by many of the other gods and as part of her um she wanted to be made to laugh and she wanted a husband and to kind of trick her because they always like to play tricks on women back then and she's a she's a mountain goddess of snow and of snowshoes um and she doesn't usually slip up <clears throat> but they said she could have any man that she desired and she was in love but she had to pick the man by his feet and she picked the wrong man she picked a sea god and he needed to live by the sea and she wanted to live in the mountains and so in the end they fell apart but she represents here not this need you know you've got to sacrifice some of your ideals you've got to have not have someone above your perfection but the same as you so that the mirrored image that you see in the other person matches you not is a distortion um, bound up with no possibility of existing so let's have a look at what Scardi has to say because she's got her in a compass going here so Scardi what do you want to tell us about mirror souls oh. what do you want to tell us Scardi about mirrored souls what do you want to tell us about mirrored souls so oh <laughs> i bet you all wish you picked three now there was a joke earlier when i said you don't want one you want three this was why so <coughs> so um look scardi's been scarred by past mistakes she wouldn't make a mistake again she would pick wisely if they said you've got to pick by the feet alone she's just going to say to them do you know what you killed my father i'm picking the person i want i'm not playing your silly games so it's about stepping into reality and pow look here he comes your knight in shining armor on a charger on a white charger and he's it's this will happen quickly if you can let go of this desire to have someone so much more perfect than you i'm saying that again because the other thing i need to remind you is is that there's a sense within you that you've created an over perfection in that jane austen way because you don't feel you truly deserve and that's why you're always tiptoeing around the issue it's a defense mechanism you kind of think you don't need this because you don't deserve it you do deserve it and that's what she's saying you deserve exactly what you wish for because she wasn't giving it she was tricked you this is not a time for tricks let go of the high ideals let go of the feeling sacrifice your unworthiness and accept that the cosmos is trying to boom split open the energy of things and bring in these new possibilities for you and look here he comes it he she you know don't gender the cards in that way it's just the way we're reading and looking at them but this is a card of a very fine lover today sometimes he can come across as someone that's not true but he's absolutely true because here we have well, it's lovely because actually i always think of this card as a pair of women completely in love with themselves with each other with themselves <laughs> with each other and it being absolutely rainbow sweet music it's you know so with him coming in this frequency this is talking about that being absolutely the most beautiful divine wonderful energy and she's saying it's better than this you know don't make a nest of your own and just curl up in it it's time to get out and experience that 
but to do to change to receive this you have to change your frequency you have to sacrifice some things some things and they are to do with unworthiness that is this real energy that i'm getting why you feel you're unworthy you will know and and you have to integrate that and you have to face that unworthiness to move on maybe you had to feel unworthy so that when this person comes you have integrated that sense to know you love yourself enough that this person's not about completing you but complimenting you so loki shapeshifty what do you have to say my friend he was a giant too loki right we had a droppage of cards here <clears throat> so you have the magician and the ten of wands as the first two cards so look you have to manifest the unburdening of your worries the things that you have created your personal mountain that you've built that shuts others out from intimacy with you let's get intimate you know this that's part of being in the physical world so you are manifesting this this is coming even if you didn't realize you were manifesting it and then we have oh no it's the other way around we have the nine of wands this is you that's that's the attitude of you this strong spiritual warrior that can walk through this completion that's it that's the frequency and then you know devil temptation in the hottest possible frequency he's coming along but what this is really about isn't it i'm joking in that i'm saying oh look you know you've got all this hot loving energy coming towards you but that's not what it's about in actual fact this is the vortex that you trap yourself in that is this that you close off with your heart chakra this is that frequency letting go of the false strings that you've built around yourself in that mirror letting go of that so that you can allow the true frequency in which is and to, to me this card is is talking about very many things it's got the it's got the um infinity symbol on her it's strength it's eight it's got the infinity symbol that the magician has the universe is manifesting this for you but this is a person who has become one with their consciousness their molecules and their luminous warrior this is someone whose inner strength is more than just loving and, and joining things together it's absolutely adoring themselves because they've done this plutonian work and move forwards and they deserve whatever gender but they're king of wands that person that just makes them feel special and and together okay so that's yours shape shifting into believing in yourself and becoming the beautiful soul that you're meant to be and having the universe send you your mirror so did you pick number four let's hope the video camera doesn't run out of energy <laughs> i think i've been talking a lot so you've got the shamanics and you've got the universal celtic this is the big fat square stone number four with a kind of black tip on one side so Mania number four what would you like to tell these lovely people that have waited a very long time what are we dealing with in their Mania so we've got three cards hmm
Okay, you've got soul retrieval. Um, I just need to look at something because the two cards that came second, <clears throat> you've got Sorcerer and the Thunder, but at the moment, they won't tell me which way round they are. I don't know whether they're coming in this way or that way, but they're opposing energies. Um, but I feel like it's this way. I feel like something's thundering in to retrieve your soul from a kind of old frequency that's caught in your energy. This. So, how am I looking at that? Yeah. So, I'm going to actually reverse these cards and read Sorcerer, Thunder, Soul Retrieval. Because that feels like the right order for it. So, Sorcerer. This feels very much connected with Karnak. What's this Sorcerer frequency? Is this the old Keeper of Karnak? 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 Oh, that was a bit strong. Okay, so it's connected with Karnak in one way. <clears throat> so this card is coming across as the keeper of Karnak and he's the person that pushes us through the initiations. We have next to it the card of the sun which represents the mother of many. And she went with me and protected me while I was at Karnak. But what I'm sensing is that all over the world, I, you know, I've talked about this a long time ago. I, I'm not, I don't want to call him a lower world demon. That's not the point. He is the official keeper of Karnak. All over the world, in other sacred sites, there are spirits that are attached to them. They're not good, they're not evil. They're just spirits fulfilling a, a function. But somehow for you, they are a barrier and they're stopping you from moving into the frequency that you need to truly exist in and so she's as other spirits all over the world are coming back they're light keepers they're light workers they're white light workers they've got this <clears throat> like i don't want to say good magic as opposed to bad magic because that isn't what it is he was the he is the energy of the age of Pisces this is the energy of the age of Aquarius it's just a different frequency and they're being flipped as well so there's a whole sense of barriers that were once immovable <clears throat> are being broken apart they're being freed to allow flows to come in so this uh, this old thing this old frequency that's been blocking you the, it's like she is bringing in with her this forceful frequency to bust through the doors to retrieve souls your soul other people's souls the soul of your ancestors but to bring back an energetic flow that's stuck so here we have Uh, yeah i just this is just about that sense of initiation you're waiting to be initiated into something completely new um and <clears throat> it's like you've always known that there was this initiation but you you couldn't have gone to the keeper of karnak or whoever the the energy keeper is that's to do with your part of the world until now because it was the wrong energy frequency we're now in the right frequency for this to work and then we have the three of wands and uh, 
This card also came up in the Mother of Many reading along with the, the Sun card. I don't know if this time you can actually see at the back, but she is at the back as the White Heart. And behind you, there's two dogs. That's the sense of her familiar and your familiar, your spirit animal, her spirit animal, working together to bring you towards her energy and to protect, to protect you. You're seeking to align yourself with a new kind of runic energy, sadia magic. The new frequencies are forming around you and <clears throat> you're being allowed to pass into new emotional waters. It's just, uh, it's, I want to say it's like a new baptism of love of moving into a new frequency energy um, and passing into a um, flow with the magic world. There are certain kind of connections with the earlier reading, but this doesn't seem to be to do with working, having a fear of working with elementals and, and goblins and things. This is about just accepting the, the I, I kind of want to say them just the magic and the splendor and the wonder of everything it's like you you need to embrace the oneness of all that's what seems to be your initiation is to and they haven't all necessarily been initiations but this really is a sense of an initiation to understand that everything is one that you, when when the world hurts you hurt um, that when an animal dies a part of you dies all of those kind of things but also that things are reborn and you're reborn it's you've got to really connect in with the total frequency of everything the the life force the source force that's in everything so this thunder what do you want to tell us about this thunder? What do you want to tell us about this thunder? We've got one on the floor and we've got one hidden. <clears throat> yeah, you're, this is, um, I get it now. <clears throat> you are meant to be a sorcerer, a wizard, whatever you want to call it you know uh a witch i don't know some of the words are just so wrong a sorceress uh a wizardess a wizard tricks whatever it is you're meant to be working towards being as being connected spirit is thundering in to try and get you to wake up to the oneness because the oneness is the key to working the fields of magic and so your challenge <clears throat> hmm hang on didn't notice that one was there yeah it's kind of like you've got these two frequencies this one is mother of many coming into your dreams to help with your nightmares um but there's a real sense that they're waking nightmares they're not they're not in the dream world it's like at the moment i mean look there's this sense that you can see down here the way these cards line up it's like there's um the frequency of the earth has changed and in this card sorry um, there, there's so much being downloaded i'm having real great difficulty sieving through it it's easier to read where it's going than where it is Th this card here that was about the battles within the world before the that's that's carried all the way down as a kind of memory line because you know 
it, all aspects of time and history are one as well they're all together at the moment this is going to start getting a little bit head melty for you but we've gone down these lines before so uh this card is it's like you've got to face the fear of not being safe there's a part of you that fears the demons the goblins and all of that kind of thing because you don't believe yet in your power and while i said at first this is like the mother of many it's also what you're supposed to be she's telling you that this is the frequency because that was the point of her first reading she was trying to say i'm human or i was human and now i'm spirit and yeah i'm a priestess and i'm magnificent but i was human just as you are human and anything is possible that you wish to embrace and so if you want to believe that the demons can hurt you they can look i had a bit of trauma when i was at karnak i sensed to keep her this energy and now when i go back because i know that there's this energy that was there for me but i don't need her to protect me she came with me to give me a sense of support it's my strength as it's your strength to become the next two cards to be the page of pentacles and the page of wands to be the new <clears throat> you know sorcerer sorceresses whatever it is that you wish to be but emerging from a dolmen just as she did and having this ability to work with the oneness of things you know a table is a table because you visualize it as a table if you realize the table is just an extension of your visualization then that table is also you and so you can change it into anything it's not the same table when somebody else sees it because it's, it's an extension of their visual senses so your uh ability is to is just, you've got to connect in with the natural world and when it comes it's it's gonna come so loudly so noisily so uh forcefully that it will slightly scare you so can you please talk about soul retrieval 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 i'm gonna just put that down because that last one didn't fall and they said stop just read the three it's because i see now that i've laid them out you've got five four three it's about bringing your essence down towards the oneness with everything so you have soul retrieval emerging becoming something new just as emerging from a dolmen becoming something new with the moon the, the, the retrieval is this new esoteric understanding and I'm just going to keep saying of oneness, of your oneness with everything around you. Um, and we had these two cards, I think, together in a reading. Um, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't quite remember. But with uh, another full moon. So I, my idea, my notion, my sense is, is that this is open to you this emerging frequency between now and the 31st of december but in between it you've got to appreciate the very tiny things in life like sitting down in the rain and appreciate getting wet oh, you see and i got wet on my journey i got drenched and it began to really annoy me i love being rained on but i felt disturbed by all the other energies um and it was a surprise for me to feel uncomfortable with it so it's a reminder that everything is part of us and then look we've got this original battle with the old dragon energy this sense of coming to one and it turns with the earth being part of the earth 
and then it ends with the king of wands and this really is you and the earth and the magic as one physical thing with the new earth dragon rotating around you so i feel like i know i haven't done this for others but i feel like we've got to sift down we've got to have the next card andy and cross source magic comes upon you i need to just shift these up um because i feel like we've got to bring this down to its natural fallout so now we want just two cards so your soul is retro is you you get your soul retrieval you become like an apprentice to the esoteric knowledge of oneness and then source energy starts to flow from within you. Can we please have one more? There we go. And this brings about emotions, new emotions, queen of emotions and three of emotions. And again, we have this card with, with this really is this frequency of the mother of many working with you to create this uh, you know shamaness shaman wizard sorceress whatever you want to call it but this is very much about the connection with a regeneration of emotions um, within the body within the blueprint it's like it's written into your molecules that this can take place and then we have you become one with the earth earth keeper and now we want the one card that goes with that And then we've filtered it down. We've brought you down from that energy to the oneness. Filtered you down. Oh, God. Ace of Pentacles. A brand new start in the earth as a keeper of the earth. That's what your goal is. And the last card that came out was the Holy Mountain. You in that source-like majesty at the top. So, I just want to show you that one again at the end. Sorry, because I got a bit overexcited. <laughs> I hope you all pick four. What an exciting frequency that is. So, you know, this is a brand new start in a new world with all the stones. This is very much Henge energy, um, which is a very magical place. Look, I'm not saying Karnak isn't, please don't get me wrong. But there's something about henge energy that that is uh love <laughs> karnak is love it's joy and it's happiness but it's not it's not its main purpose when it was built it was a marker in time for communities and it's got all kinds of magical portals going on in and, and among there but it's not the frequency of the higher heart and then Stonehenge is the frequency of the higher heart for some reason um, or so I understand anyway that's kind of irrelevant and I'm not dissing Karnak I love the place and I will go back so anyway that's the readings what well, say hello everybody I hope you can see in this very badly lit video but it had to be done what well, say